Okay, looks like we are going, and things are not seeing a problem at this point in time, so we'll go ahead and check the preview and make certain we've got everything where it needs to be. So if you have any plans for tomorrow with the eclipse, stay tuned. We'll be doing a lot more coming up here in just a little bit with that, and we'll also talk about the forecast into the course of the rest of the week. So as of right now, we're again looking at the possibility of less in the way of showers and thunderstorms for tonight, but also the possibility of, again, more potential for more showers and thunderstorms out there as we get into the course of the rest of this next week. Yes, that's a lot to handle, but we'll be looking again at some better conditions out there anyway as we get into the next couple of days. So far, again, looking pretty good across the Mid-South area. If you have any plans for travel for the eclipse, that also is looking at least a little bit better. Give me just two seconds here while I invite all of our Facebook friends in so they can see a little bit more about what's going on for tonight. And as of right now, Again, fairly quiet conditions on the Sunday evening side of things, but we'll be seeing some hotter conditions after we cool off for just a bit. Temperatures doing a good job of moderating over the next couple of days, so that also looks pretty good. And we'll talk about that in just a little while. Thanks for joining us on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik down here in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Official News Channel 3 forecast at WRAG.com slash weather. Current forecast available here in the blue bar. Red bar, again, showing the various social media websites when they're not on screen at various points in time. It's, again, fairly quiet for right now, but we see, again, the potential for more showers and thunderstorms out there. A fairly clear view from our St. Francis cam, a little bit of cloud cover on the horizon. This is where I will be tomorrow for the eclipse, and also seeing, again, the best possibility of getting a lot of good coverage of what the kids are seeing out there. Really looking forward uh, to one of our weather bug sites. Uh, seeing what's going on during the eclipse. Hopefully we'll get a chance to monitor the readout station from the weather bug site at St. Francis tomorrow. And when the eclipse happens, the temperature should drop uh, for just a little bit. Uh, Chris George Shalmoon, hope I'm saying that correctly. Chalmoon, uh, thanks for dropping by and enjoy your dessert tomorrow. Hopefully you brought some ice cream with you. Uh, Mary Jewell, thank you very much for joining us from South Fulton, Tennessee. Let's take a look at radar at this time and show you something interesting here, which is kind of cool when you take a look at it. Uh, right over the Mississippi Valley, you notice kind of a very, a uh, little bit more of a raised signature taking place. That, again, is insects and bird activity taking place right along the Mississippi River, right on down into around parts of Mississippi and Arkansas. That is birds and bugs showing up on the radar. Very easily done with the right technology and the right amount of power, and that's exactly what we see uh, where the birds and the insects are actually thickest at this point in time. Now, beyond that, we don't have much of anything else going on. The thunderstorms from earlier basically are all over with. We do have a few thunderstorms taking place well back over into around portions of central Arkansas. Beyond that, there's really just not that much happening at this time, and most of that activity has basically gone its way all the way over to around portions close to Cabot, Little Rock, and south and east of Conway drifting away from us at this time. Rest of the Mid-South quiet, but we could see some more showers and thunderstorms popping up in the course of the next couple of hours. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Wide-scale radar. That is showing, again, a decent amount of activity uh, back to the north of us into around portions of Missouri. That's redeveloping, and that could be dropping its way into the Mid-South as we go into later on tonight. Right up there around Silver Dollar City, Lake of the Ozarks, Springfield, Joplin. That's where we may see some more activity heading our way and getting down into this area. Betty Smith from Halls, Tennessee, thanks for joining us for tonight on Facebook. Alice McGowie, thank you very much from Wyatt, Mississippi. Looking forward to the eclipse myself tomorrow. Laura Fleming, good evening to you. Uh, Bart Thompson, rain was a surprise today. Well, it was welcome, but definitely not a surprise anyway at least in my forecast. As we go into tomorrow, we're going to be looking again at warm conditions out there. Uh, for tomorrow morning, again, we cannot rule out the possibility, unfortunately, of a couple of stray thunderstorms out there in the green shaded category that you see here. And that also will continue right on in through about noon. Now, most of that activity will be around eastern Arkansas and extreme northwestern Mississippi. That'll be the best chance of anything involving rainfall but it's not great chances. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast coming up in just a little bit. By tomorrow evening, the rainfall chances retreat back to our north, and our next cold front will be on the way as we head from Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. That'll be our next best chance of getting in some showers and some thunderstorms of a possible severe nature. We'll talk more about that coming up here 
in just a little bit. The heat advisory has been canceled for the Mid-South. There's little, if anything, left over from the heat for the overnight hours, but again, in that blue box over there on the right-hand side of your screen, we may see again the possibility of some uh, showers and thunderstorms, which could turn a little bit stronger to severe in the next couple of days. Kenny Tamboli, welcome from Munford, 82 degrees there. Michael Tabitha and Tabitha Neal from Decatursville, thanks for joining us. Renee Vaughn Homewood from Forest City, thanks for stopping on by. 81 degrees, thank you for the weather report. Laura Fleming in Covington. Uh, Marsha Couples from West Memphis, thank you also for stopping by uh, for tonight. Let's see who else we got on here for this evening. Uh, Betty Smith, I think we already talked to you. Thank you very much on that. And everybody else, thank you very much for stopping on by. All right, so what are we looking for into the rest of the period tonight? It's going to be on the warm side, no question about that. Low temperatures already back into the mid-80s, and it looks like temperatures into tonight not much lower than the mid to upper 70s at best. Highs tomorrow, again, with the eclipse going on right before the eclipse happens. Uh, kids at the schools are going to be out and about, probably on the front lawns, uh, or the playgrounds of the Mid-South. It's going to be steamy out there tomorrow. There's no question about it. So everybody needs to stay hydrated if you're going to be out there doing stuff. Make certain everybody's got enough water to drink and take some breaks from the heat out there for this morning. Uh, Michael Tolleson, Moscow, Tennessee, says hi. Well, downtown Memphis says hi right back. Thank you very much for stopping on by. Now, chances of rainfall for tomorrow. Here's the good news. Again, better chances, about 15% around the Boot Hill and eastern Arkansas and extreme northwestern areas of Mississippi. The rest of the Mid-South, about a 10% chance, maybe as high as about 20% west of the river. It's not a great chance, but it is still a chance of some rainfall out there. So please keep that in mind to remember that if, if you see lightning or hear thunder, back indoors again. No other exceptions about that. We've had 11 lightning deaths so far this year. Five of those were from people standing underneath trees. Again, when thunder roars, go indoors. Let's please remember that, especially during the eclipse tomorrow. And temperatures and weather conditions out there, we may see some stray showers and thunderstorms out there about the time of the eclipse, but it's going to be about 90 degrees, so very hot and very humid out there into tomorrow at the time of the eclipse. When does everything happen? We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Bozo Woolfolk from Senatobia, thanks for joining us from Mississippi. And likewise, to my hot babe of wife, Melissa Alford Onik, watching at home tonight, probably grading papers and getting ready for the uh, Eclipse show to start for tomorrow with her students as well at Bonlin Middle School. Hot throughout the rest of the week. Not much is going to be changing. High temperatures on Tuesday back in the lower 90s, but this is also where we start to see much better possibilities of showers and thunderstorms getting into to, uh, Tuesday afternoon and evening and quite possibly right on into about Wednesday night. Lows in the lower 70s and chances of rain fall right in that green band right there will be greatest as we go from Tuesday night into Wednesday dropping into the Mid-South as our next cold front kind of wanders its way on through. It will not be done with us until we get into Wednesday where the temperatures will be much more palatable, lower 80s for highs, but then chances of rainfall will be sticking around the Mid-South and notice that we've got a lot more rainfall on Wednesday along and south of Interstate 40 making its way on down to Mississippi and Southeast Arkansas. So a couple of good rounds of rainfall, but again, remember there is that possibility of severe weather in there, so we'll be watching that with a lot of interest as well. Again, for to the next couple of days, we're going to be keeping our eyes on the tropics. What's left of Tropical Storm Harvey is still expected to possibly cause problems, and this could re-energize. It's now up to a high percentage rate of about 80% of redeveloping. That's this orange one right here between roughly Jamaica and portions of Panama. This looks like it's going to be slamming into around uh, the eastern part of Central America. That could be something there. Robin Dismuke, Dismuke, hope I'm saying that right, from Bartlett. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Kenneth Sims, lightning hit a tree about 200 feet one morning when you were delivering newspapers. Well, it's quite a story to tell. Uh, for show and tell at some point. Uh, back into the Bahamas, that's still pretty cool, but Dane, glad you're okay on stuff like that. Another disturbance, again, just around the Bahamas, and this could turn into something. This could be a threat to Miami, uh, all the way up into Georgia, so we'll be watching this one here. A little further out into the Atlantic, again, another storm system, but nothing named or organized just yet. Three systems to take a look at if you're traveling from Brownsville to the Keys, 
the Crescent City to the east coast of Florida. You want to keep up to date with what's going on here, and we'll help you do that with News Channel 3. Tomorrow, looking forward to seeing what happens when the sky gets dark and things start changing a little bit. We might even be able to see a few stars or planets out tomorrow, so I'll be keeping an eye on that and tweeting a whole bunch from the St. Francis event, so stay tuned for more on the eclipse coming our way. Now, what are we looking for into tomorrow? This is a great website to go to. It's called timeanddate.com. If you've never seen this before, it's a great place to go to to get more information on what's going on with the eclipse. Again, what we're going to be looking for at this point is going to be, again, uh, the eclipse of the sun taking place. And starting at about 11.52 in the morning is where the sun uh, gets started, just being touched by the moon. And that is called contact the first time around. That, again, is going to continue until the moon swings on by and hits the maximum at about 1.22 in the afternoon. Now keep in mind that there is still at least about 5% of the sun's surface that is going to be uncovered. It doesn't take much to burn the retinas of your eyes. Very dangerous. If you're going to be looking at the sun anywhere in the Mid-South tomorrow, you need to wear the eclipse glasses or have that welder's glass up there to make certain your eyes are in good shape. Do not risk damage to your eyes by doing this. The path of totality is going to be, again, well to our north. We are not going to be in the path of totality, which is where that uh, dark stripe is from roughly Lincoln on down to Nashville. Now, if you're in this area here, the sun will be completely and totally covered, and you can take your glasses off and look at the sun only if you are in the path of totality. If you're not in the path of totality like we are, we're going to be just south of that area. Just enough is going to be uncovered to cause damage to your eyeballs. So again, please use caution and common sense. Here's the times on this if you're just wondering about this. 11.52 a.m. The eclipse begins. The sun just touched by the moon. 1.22 maximum eclipse into the afternoon and evening. Marsha Couples, welcome from uh, Matthew Martin saying hi from West Memphis. Thanks for stopping on by. And then by 2.50 in the afternoon, the eclipse is going to be over with and done, and that'll be it. So do your best to get out and take a look at this if you can. Get the eclipse glasses so your eyes are protected. The sun is the brightest thing in our solar system. That 5% right there can still damage your eyes. So please use caution on this, and we'll be repeating a whole bunch of information about this as we go into the next several hours into tomorrow morning. More information about this at weather.gov, and click on the total solar eclipse information from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Again, the path of totality back to our north. It will not be in the Mid-South, but we will be able to see a good portion of the sun that will be covered by this. So if you'd like to know more about this, this is a great website to go to. You already know about what's going on on my Facebook page. You can see more about that at facebook.com slash austinonic wreg3. John David King, thank you very much uh, for sharing our video. Forgot to mention that earlier. Do appreciate that. One last thing, and just on kind of a personal note, this is really incredible to see this. This is not anything that happens on a year-to-year -year or even decade-by-decade -decade basis. I remember the last one back that I saw in about 1979, and that's been quite some time ago. Here's something to think about. With Neil deGrasse Tyson up here in my banner page, uh, an advocate for science, you can do that too. Instead of fussing around with all the camera lenses and knobs and everything else, the path of totality, the maximum coverage, lasts for about two and a half minutes. That's it. That's all the time you've got to see the maximum part of the eclipse as it gets to its darkest point. Don't be so connected with the cameras and tweeting and everything else that you miss this. Catch this. Get involved in it. Get your kids excited by this. If you're a teacher, get your students excited by it. This is a really cool thing to learn about science and to really promote it to the younger kids, especially this could be a game changer for somebody deciding on a career at some point in time to learn more about becoming an astronomer, an engineer, an astronaut, a chemist, anything like that could be very cool. And this could spark that interest. And that's a very neat thing to have happen. So something to think about if you have the ability to, again, uh, learn more about this. Great opportunity to do so, again, on my social media pages here. But don't miss it. Don't be out there fiddling around with so much. You're going to, if you miss totality, that's it. The next one doesn't come around for another seven years. And this is, again, a good opportunity to see this one, if at all possible. And, of course, don't forget to drop by my Facebook page and my Twitter page at Aonic underscore WREG3. Would love to have you along for the ride on this. And if you get pictures, tweet them to me. I'll forward them along to the station. 
Probably billions of pictures are going to be taken of this eclipse tomorrow as it passes through the area. We would love to see your pictures, but don't get so involved in the button pushing and the tweeting and everything else that you miss it. Enjoy it. Do your best to catch this as much as you possibly can. Experience it. Have something to tell your kids and your grandkids and your friends and your co-workers and everybody else about. This is a very cool thing to get involved with and to learn more about. It's really, again, just absolutely incredible to see something like this happen. And we want to make certain everybody's involved with this. Again, something you can think about for years to come. Take some pictures if you want to. There's no question about that. But just, again, be ready to experience the path of totality. There are still some places around the Mid-South that are still selling eclipse glasses. I believe the Pink Palace still has some. I believe uh, they're still selling them at American Paper Optics up in Bartlett. So you can still catch them there, if I'm not mistaken. But check out the News Channel 3 website for more information about that. Again, the seven-day forecast, looking at the course of the next seven days. Numbers back in the lower to mid-90s. But but then dropping into the mid to upper 80s, so a little bit better on the temperatures. Not doing too bad for this time of the year when it, all things considered. And that chance of stronger weather as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, that can be a bit of a problem. So stay tuned for more uh, with that forecast coming up on News Channel 3. Also, don't forget... My complete forecast available with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning on Talkback Live. That's on AM 730 or on TalkbackLiveNetwork.org. You can listen online. Great opportunity to learn more there. And stay tuned for some great sports chat. And that starts at 7 a.m. tomorrow. That'll do it for this edition of Weather Overtime. We'll be on exactly at 10 o'clock tonight for the News Channel 3 wrap-up of Sunday night news in the Mid-South area. would love to have you along for the ride there. More opportunities to contact me. Again, if you have an idea as to what you'd like to see on here on these weather reports. We'd love to know about it. Send me an email at austin.onic at wreg.com. Again, right there in the blue bar up around the iPhone area. Uh, if you'd like to know more, please let us know. We can't feature things unless you tell us about it, so please do so out there. Stay tuned to News Channel 3. I'll be live at St. Francis. Todd Demers will be monitoring the weather here in the News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center. Tim Simpson will be live at AutoZone Park with their special eclipse game going on and a ton of other stuff happening with a special report coming up tomorrow. Tons of stuff happening. We're going to be glad to have you along for the ride, so get set for an astronomical opportunity that does not come along every single day and get ready to science it up. We're going to have a great time with this. Really looking forward to it. I'm already geeking out. Hopefully you are as well. So let's go out and have some fun tomorrow and see what happens. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with our Sunday evening edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, and stay tuned to News Channel 3 for more updates on the forecast on air and online.